year 2015 was an important year for this cycle of activities for the Rosicrucian Order Abba. In other words, the celebration of the 100th anniversary of the second cycle of worldwide activities that began in 1915 under the leadership of the late Dr. E. Spencer Lewis. 39. It is customary for artisans for us that on such occasions an assessment or review of the organization, the contribution of its pioneers, and its worldwide impact over the past 100 years would have been carefully or clinically analyzed. I have stated publicly, and I'm sure I speak for most of our members, that the Rosicrucian Order Amok, through its teachings, has changed all of our lives, mentally, physically, psychically, and spiritually. The fact that the Order has been able to transform the lives of thousands worldwide and still maintain their status of being a non-sectarian organization should be applauded by all deep-thinking individuals. We must keep in mind that there are many organizations with a similar history that has been forced to close or rebrand their operations in order to survive the impact of this technological age. The American author and leadership guru John Maxwell once said, legacies that matter are connected with people. A hundred years from now, all that will matter is the people that you connected with in such a way that you added value and meaning to their lives. He further quoted political commentator Walter Lippmann, who said the final test of a leader is that he leaves behind in others the conviction and will to carry on. Ultimately, if your people cannot, if your people can't do it without you, you haven't been successful in raising up other leaders. It is for this reason, fathers and sorrows, that affiliated bodies were formed and empowered by the Grand Lodges to be a sacred space for work and worship, a training ground not only for personal development but for future leaders, not exclusively for our beloved order, but that in their sphere of operations and by their example, through the effective, effectiveness of the Rosicrucian teachings in their lives, they become catalysts for change in the lives of others. A light to add to the light in others. On this Memorial Day, brothers and sorrows, where we honor those who gave their lives for what we now enjoy, I draw to your attention another anniversary. Though subsumed within the 100th worldwide anniversary, which was recently celebrated, I speak of the 60th anniversary of the death transition of the founder of the group that paved the way for Kyrie Lodge and by extension, Rosicrucian activities in Trinidad and Tobago. And that person was the late Father Arthur Placid, who on May 31st, 1955, was laid to rest at the La Perouse Cemetery. Unfortunately, the actual date of his transition is unknown. As a mark of respect, the rules will be placed on what was once his doorstep, as you see here. To the memory of not only Frater Placid, but more importantly to the memory of all who assembled at his residence at number 23 Marine Square, renamed Independence Square, Port of Spain. We must keep in mind that Frater Placid for the classic school was at one time a safe haven for Rosicrucians, or for that matter, where the seed that was planted blossomed into what is today Kyrie Lodge. It was not the only place where Rosicrucians assembled in the city of Rosicrucians. In fact, his home was just one of two venues, the other being located on Upper Henry Street, above what was once a garage, it may be safe to conclude that the close proximity of these two groups may have been as a result of a split from an original group. In reference to our Rosicrucian history in Trinidad, little is known about Frata Placid, and that is because those who knew him 
have all experienced the Great Initiation, and the church records for that period has since been removed to another location. In his letter to me after the Caribbean conclave at, at the Hilton, which was hosted by the Trinidad chapter in 1990, Frater Paul Marcel, past master of our chapter and our first historian stated he, conducted, he contacted Frater Plassey's group in 1948. That would have been two years before the late Frater David Martin, who initially provided us with his recollection of events from 1950. Frater Marcel further stated that it was Frater Placid who informed him of the other Rosicrucian group operating on Upper Henry Street. In other words, Frater Marcel met an active group in 1948. We, can, we may conclude that our history began either before the Second World War or during the period of the war, which ended in 1945. The transition of Frater Placid on May 31st, 1955, meant that the group had to find a new meeting place. And that place was the old public library next to the Port of Spain Town Hall. As a product and as a chapter, they held meetings at the following places the Oddfellows Hall on Pembroke Street and the Foresters Lodge on Phillips Street in Port of Spain. As we pay our respects to the memory of Father Placid today, we must place this contribution in the context of an intervention for Rosie Church in Trinidad and Tobago. In the same way that the work and leadership of Dr. H. Spencer Lewis was also an intervention for thousands around the world. It gave members who felt as though they were living in exile a sense of hope that there were others around the world who felt like they do. The, the need to investigate the mysteries of life that is found in man and nature. It takes a special kind of person to raise their hand, to take the initiative and lead by example. There is no doubt in my mind that inspired leadership is a spiritual calling, a call to duty from the cosmic master to lead others in an exodus from the ordinary life to the path that leads to light, life, and love. And we have had such examples as the late great Dr. Martin Luther King, Mahatma Gandhi, and also Nelson Mandela, just to name a few. In his letter, a copy of which was passed on to the administrative officers of Kyrie Lodge in 1990, Frater Marcel recalled having to wait outside of Frater Classic's room. That would be just behind me here. Before being permitted to be part of the group. Frater Marcel left the group and our country in 1949 to live and work in what was then known as British Guyana, renamed Guyana after their independence. In Guyana, he made contact and became a member of that group, that Rosicrucian group in that country. I am of the view that our country, Trinidad and Tobago, may have been the last of the English-speaking countries in the Caribbean region to form a Rosicrucian group. My research has shown that the first English-speaking Caribbean country and the first Rosicrucian group to be recognized by the Grand Lodge was in British Guiana. The first master was the late Frederick E. Charles of Victoria Village, Demerara. And that information was listed in the Mystic Triangle magazine in June of 1928. To the non-members who may be viewing this video clip, the person appointed to lead a Rosicrucian group is called or referred to as the master. It is a fraternal title. It does not mean that he or she walks on water, heals the sick, raises the dead, levitates, 
appears and disappears or any of that stuff. It simply means manager of the group. It must be understood that Frater Placid's group, in spite of their good intentions, was an unauthorized group. The recognition came in 1956, a year after his passing. I now take this opportunity to place a rose where it all began for Kyrie Lodge as a mark of respect to the memory of all those who helped Father Arthur Plassey to pave the way for us in Trinidad and Tobago. So mote it be. So mote it be.